Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra 3 months free. Hey everyone and welcome to another GTA Online San Andreas Mercenaries video. Today we have the long awaited one, my in-depth guide of the new F-160 Raiju jet. I've tested just about every single aspect of this jet that I can think of, from dogfighting, air to ground combat, different maneuvers you can do, and I'm here to bring all that to you in this video. Before we begin though, I do want to give my friends Ender, Xena, and Y7 a shout out for helping me record and test for it, because there were a lot of different things we had to test. So we'll start off with the armor, the Raiju will blow up in 3 explosive rounds, Two railgun shots. Three homing rockets. Or one RPG. However, randomly the jet will sometimes blow up in just one rocket. Not sure why this is the case. I guess it's similar to the armor bug of the Avenger. Although I have never experienced a time in an actual combat scenario where I've blown up in one rocket in the Raiju. I've only ever seen it in the testing here, so not really sure what's going on with that. However, this jet also has another weird feature slash bug. It just doesn't blow up from taking regular bullet damage. I have three miniguns here shooting at me and the jet saws out every now and then sure but it never sets on fire and never blows up at least not for a very long time which means other jets that shoot regular mgs like the pyro the starling the sea breeze are gonna have a very rough time against this plane just look at how long i'm shooting the raiju with the pyro bullets here that deal basically heavy sniper damage and he's able to go and take off like the jet is hardly phased by it The only way you can blow it up is with FMJ bullets or explosives, and this only happens when there's a player inside. The moment you kill the player, the jet is able to blow up again, so it's likely a bug. It's just very odd. Although, if you happen to use it for PvE content, it's actually a good thing because you won't ever have to worry about the NPC gunfire causing critical damage to your jet. And I'm not sure if this is connected to that armor bug or not, but if you jump out of the Raiju, even at max altitude, and it plummets to the ground with no pilot, it survives the fall somehow, and it's still completely flyable. Right here I did just that, and I flew it all the way back to my hangar, and it was fine. Very strange how that works out, and I'm not exactly sure why. If I do ever figure out what causes this, I'll make sure to let you guys know. For weaponry, it has explosive MGs and missiles. The explosive MGs are essentially a carbon copy of the rogue guns. They take a few shots to kill a player on the ground, and they're very spread out, which makes hitting players quite difficult, especially when the guns alternate which side they fire from every shot. And here's where we get to our second bug with this plane. None of the effects for the MGs show up to other players. The tracers don't show up, there's no muzzle flash coming from the guns themselves to indicate that they're firing, and the guns don't even make a sound. The only way to know that you're being shot at by this plane is if you see the explosions hitting the ground. It's extremely immersion breaking. From your own perspective firing the guns, everything works fine, the sound, the tracers, and the muzzle flash effect, but for others, they don't hear or see any feedback to let them know they're being shot at. So for example, let's say you look behind you and see a Raiju, it'll look like the jet is just cruising behind you, but on their screen, they're trying to shoot at you and take you down. And you have no way of knowing that, so yeah, super immersion breaking that bug is, hopefully they fix it. As for the rockets, they are your standard rockets that you see on the buzzard, not very good tracking, they only fire two at a time before you have to wait a short cooldown, however the rockets are somewhat centered underneath the jet which makes it a bit easier to aim when you're shooting at people on foot, and the lock-on range for the homing missiles is 400 meters which is kind of on the longer side in terms of vehicle lock-on rockets. 
In terms of its performance, this jet is fast. It's now the new fastest aircraft in the entire game. The previous fastest plane was the Pyro, and this beats it by a decent margin in a straight line. It's almost as fast as the rockets it fires at top speed. If you fire a rocket while you're going super fast at top speed, the rocket is going to blow up and you're going to take damage from it. And in a vertical climb test, we have a few planes here, the B-11, the Pyro, and the Starling. And all we're doing is going straight up in the air the moment we take off. And the Raiju also smokes the competition at that as well. The amount of power it has coming from its engine is super high. You get to sky limit so fast. That brings us to the dogfighting portion of the video. Now, when it comes to dogfighting, it varies a lot because it's very dependent on the skill level of both yourself and the person you're dogfighting. That being said, in my dogfighting tests, I went against Y7 or Satai's in the footage, who was much better than me at dogfighting, and my friends Ender and Xenon, who I would say are better than average, but not extremely practiced in dogfighting. And myself, I would say I'm a little better than average. I've been practicing a bit lately before the update came out to try to at least get somewhat better at dogfighting, but I'm not the best, not by any means. And from my experience dogfighting these different planes while in the Raiju, just in a straight speed dogfight, no stalls, no VTOL, the Raiju definitely is not the best handling aircraft. It definitely gets outturned by the B-11, the Pyro, and the Starling, and even the Laser too if they're a good pilot. Satai's is a good pilot though, and I had a lot of trouble getting behind him while he was in those aircraft, especially the B-11. The B-11 is probably the scariest plane that you can go up against in a straight-up dogfight because it has the one gun that can harm you, the explosive MG. Of course, you can get cockpit sniped by the other jets, but that's much harder to do. However, like I said, Satai's is a better dogfighter than I am, so he'd likely beat me even if we were in the same plane. But just just based on the time it took him to get behind me, especially in the B-11, he was on my tail even just in the first couple of turns. When I went against Ender and Xenon, I was able to get the jump on them even in planes that should have better handling, and that's exactly what I'm trying to say. It's very dependent on the pilot's skill level. Most of the time in free mode, you're not going to come across people that are extremely good at dogfighting, not even close. There's not very many people that know the dogfighting mechanics of speed control, camera control, and all that stuff. So if you know what you're doing in the Raiju, you're probably going to win like 80% of your engagements. And remember, we're talking just about regular turning with no VTOL. If you took the world's best B-11, Starling, or Pyro Pilot against the world's best Raiju Pilot without using VTOL, the Raiju Pilot would probably lose that. However, when you bring in what you can do with VTOL, this is where the Raiju shines. Because the VTOL mode isn't at all like it is in the Hydra. In the Hydra, you can do VTOL maneuvers to win dogfights, but you cannot do half the stuff you can do with the Raiju. If you mix the use of the VTOL mode in the middle of a dogfight, you can beat even the best pilots in any of the planes. Let me just show you a few things you can do with VTOL mode in the Raiju. So first of all, you have much more control over the jet in hover mode compared to the Hydra. You can tilt it much more to one side, so much so that you can even flip the jet upside down. And if you flip it upside down and then continue holding left trigger, you can hover upside down. If you're going full speed ahead, you can tilt the aircraft upside down while activating VTOL and then quickly tilt the back of the jet downwards and deactivate VTOL to go right into a backwards flight, which stops all your forward momentum in just a second compared to holding the brakes, and of course puts you into a backwards flight. If you go up in the air, activate VTOL and point straight down while holding the brakes, you can do a VTOL dive bomb so to say, where you're almost going the speed of a starling, that's how slow you are straight down, which can be helpful for attacking anything beneath you, although it can be hard to line up properly on ground targets, especially if they're moving. It's going to require a lot of practice if you want to get good at that. You can also just fly the jet backwards in VTOL mode if you'd like. And it also happens to be the only jet that you can land upside down and then flip it back over again from the ground using VTOL mode. There are just so many fun things you can do with this jet, and when used in dogfights at the right time, your opponent is not going to have an enjoyable experience. Even Satai's, who is better than me at dogfighting, I can still get shots on him using this trick in the same planes that were out turning me before. Basically what VTOL does is it turns your jet into a helicopter whenever you want, which is extremely powerful. The drawback of the Hydra VTOL was that you didn't have much maneuverability so you couldn't really line up shots like you can with the Raiju. 
Of course, this doesn't mean you're completely unkillable when you do this. Using VTOL correctly does require a bit of skill and spatial awareness. Understanding how high you are above the ground so you don't crash right into it or the water, which I've done a few times. You would have to be one of the best pilots in the game to render yourself really unkillable doing this. But if you're going up against your average sweaty griefers in free mode, like I said, this will win you fights most of the time. Even against other Raiju pilots who aren't aware of this tactic, it's going to help you out tremendously. If you use VTOL when someone is already right behind you though, you're likely to eat a bunch of shots. So it's not just a get out of jail free card, but this is the reason why the Raiju can be so strong in dogfights. But I do still want to reiterate, you're not going to come across people in free mode doing this very often. It's really rare to see this. The Raiju has a very high skill ceiling to it. And let's put it this way. We've known the Starling and Pyro have been amazing dogfighters for years now, and I rarely come across people that are like gods in those planes in free mode. Or at least people that I don't know that I'm fighting against. I also wanted to compare how good the VTOL was at climbing versus some helicopters. Against the Hunter, it's not very good. The Hunter outclimbs it by a long shot. It climbs more similar to the Buzzard, even though it still gets beat by the Buzzard in terms of climbing, but it's not bad. Now let's go over the Raiju in some different scenarios, aside from dogfighting. How good is it at air to ground? Unfortunately, not very. If you go and use this jet like you would the laser, just going down for strays with the MGs, you're probably not going to get any kills doing this. One, because the MGs don't do enough damage or have enough rate of fire to kill targets that quick. But the jet is also just extremely fast, and you soon realize you have to pull up very quickly or get a smack into the ground. Trying to free aim rockets at ground targets can also be quite difficult, and it's just not very consistent at killing people on foot. You do have the option of using the jet in VTOL mode against people on foot, and this can work quite well actually because of the amount of control you have. Like I said earlier, it's like using it as a helicopter more than a jet. And I would say the best strategy here if you're going to use VTOL is to either ragdoll the enemy with the MGs and then switch to a missile for the kill shot. Using the MGs only for kills can sometimes take forever because the ragdoll puts them in a hard to hit position and then you have to wait till they land to hit them again. So it might be easier to just hit them with the MGs first so they can't attack you back and then feed a missile for the kill. On the other hand though, using VTOL against people on foot is also very risky because the railgun exists and explosive rounds exist. You can dodge rockets just fine in VTOL mode, you dodge rockets the same way you would in a helicopter by leading into them, but all they need is two shots on you with a railgun and you're dead, so it's hard to really recommend that strategy too. In the city with more cover, it might work a bit better, but the Raiju is a bigger jet. It's not really hard to hit, so it's definitely not the best air-to-ground aircraft by a long shot. I would say that now would go to any of the planes that have bombs on them. Probably the Starling would be the best in that case. If you're fighting Mark II oppressors with this jet, it's kind of a pain in the ass because it's such a small target. It can be hard to hit with those explosive MGs. For the first few times I was fighting the Mark II oppressor, I tried using the VTOL mode, but that just puts you into a position that's easy for the Mark II to get you. If you're in just regular jet mode, you're so fast that the missiles really can't do much to you. You can just go straight up in the air against any type of missile and they're not going to have enough time to reach you. Ultimately, what I found to be the best strategy against Mark II oppressors is basically the same way you would attack oppressors with a laser or hydra. You attack from either above or below them. So either going way up in the air and then going for a dive bomb, or when the Mark II oppressor gets higher in the air, you can attack them from underneath and try to hit them with the MGs. And you can even make stealth mode into this too, so it's harder for them to track you before you go in for your dive bomb or underneath shot. Really, it ends up being a drawn out fight though when you do this because the MGs are not on your side when trying to hit such a small target, especially when the jet is so fast. So I want to take a moment and talk about this jet's use in PvE. I know the common questions are all PvP focused, like how good is it at dogfighting or is it the new griefer's toy? But outside of all that, this jet is the new best PvE vehicle. Think about it. It's the fastest vehicle in the whole game. It can get you across the map in under a minute with ease. If you need to land or take out a bunch of enemies at the location wherever you're going, you can go into VTOL mode and use it like you would the Sparrow, and the AI is not going to really damage the plane because of that armor thing it's got where regular bullets do hardly anything against it, although it might only be like that for the time being until they change it or patch it, but still. And on top of all that, it has stealth mode so you can keep your distance against other players if you really want to, if you want to avoid assholes. However, the one unfortunate thing we learned about stealth mode testing this jet is that stealth mode sucks. It used to hide any cargo you were holding and your blip from the map, so if you were doing like a cargo mission or a, like a CO crate resupply and grabbed one of the crates and got in the jet in stealth mode or the Akula beforehand, it would hide you and your cargo, but it doesn't do that anymore. Look at this, when my friend got into stealth mode while holding cargo in the new jet, not only do I see his cargo, but I still see the blinking jet icon. So it just flat out doesn't even work when you're holding cargo at all. And we tried this with the CEO crates, and the same thing happened. And same with the Akula. So I don't know if they just broke stealth mode in this update or a previous one because I haven't tested it in such a long time, but that's bogus, and they should definitely fix that. Even with that though, I still consider this to be the best PvE vehicle in the entire game. I was able to do a headhunter so fast, faster than I would with any other jet, even before the laser nerf, I think. 
just being able to zip around the map at such speed and then go into VTOL mode to take care of any enemies I need to, it's so useful. Anyways, that is going to wrap up my in-depth guide and review of the Raiju Jet. Rockstar did a good job with this one, aside from the couple of bugs it has, which I hope are fixed sooner rather than later. It's most likely going to be the latter, let's be honest. But I do think this is probably the new king of the skies in free mode. The utility it has cannot be matched. Let me know what you guys think about the Raiju Jet in the comments. Do you think it's overpowered? Let me know. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GTA Online content. Once again, thank you to Ender, Xenon, NY7 for helping me get the footage for this video, as well as to all my chat members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. And that is why the Raiju is so good. <laughs> oh. <laughs>